In this unit, we're going to look at another type of addition reaction that alkynes participate in, and that is acid catalyzed hydration. The term acid catalyzed hydration should ring a bell to you because we talked about acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes in an earlier chapter. In the acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes, our final product was an alcohol. In this case, when we do acid catalyzed hydration of alkynes, our final product, as we see here on the right, is going to be either an aldehyde or in this case, a ketone. So we need to take a look at what's happening in this reaction that is different than the reaction of alkenes that leads the reaction with alkynes to give us a ketone or aldehyde product. So let's go ahead and get started with the reaction type that we're looking at here. So we will go ahead and start with that same example that we were looking at there in the intro, where we take one propine or prop one ine, and we're gonna react that with our mixture of water, acid, which is common acid here is sulfuric acid, so I'll just put H2SO4, that serves as a catalyst, as does mercury 2 plus, Hg2 plus. So the water, I mean the acid and the mercury are gonna act to catalyze the reaction. The reaction mechanism for this reaction is rather similar to the mechanism of alkenes undergoing acid catalyzed hydration reactions. So we're not going to look at the mechanism for this reaction. We're going to look at the final product, keeping in mind here that just like the acid catalyzed hydration of the alkenes, this reaction does follow Mark's rule. So it is a regioselective reaction. And we're going to go ahead following Mark's rule and we'll add H and OH across the carbon carbon triple bond. So that's going to leave us with a carbon-carbon double bond where we've added H to one of the two carbons and OH to the other following Mark's rule. Remember Mark's rule says that we need to add the H to the less substituted carbon, that is the carbon that has more hydrogens directly bonded to it and fewer alkyl substitutions. And the OH goes on our more alkyl substituted carbon. So following that guideline of Mark's rule, we can cut right to the chase here and think about what our product would be. So our product's going to correspond to still having a carbon-carbon double bond, but having added across to give us an OH group here at the more substituted carbon and a new hydrogen atom here at the less substituted carbon. So rather than having CH at the terminal, we'll have CH2. And again, we've skipped the mechanism for this. I don't expect you to know the mechanism for this reaction, but you should be relatively aware that it's similar to the mechanism of adding water across an alkene carbon-carbon double bond here, except in this case, since we started with a triple bond, we're going down to a double bond once we do the addition of H and OH following Mark's rule. Now, at this point, this is where this, this reaction gets interesting. This is where we're going to focus our attention on the mechanism. So the final product that you would observe here for this reaction is actually not going to be what we see here on the screen. We would refer to this molecule that we see here on the screen as a so-called enol. En, standing for alkene, since we have a carbon-carbon double bond in there. OL, or all, standing for alcohol. So an enol is a molecule that has an alkene group directly bonded to an alcohol group. And enols tend to be very unstable molecules, except in a very few select cases. So what will happen here with the enol is that it will undergo a reaction process to form a more stable final product. So that reaction process happens to be an equilibrium process. I'm going to show that using an equilibrium arrow here, where I've put the equilibrium arrow to try to, equal, to try to relatively reasonably represent where the equilibrium will actually reside. So I've drawn that forward arrow for the reaction much larger than the reverse arrow, indicating the equilibrium is going to lie far toward the side of the product. And what's going to happen is that in creating the product, we're going to go ahead and we'll convert the OH group into a carbonyl group. And we will go through the mechanism for this. I'm just for now going to show you what we would end up with as the final product. So just take that OH group and convert it into a carbonyl group. So that carbon oxygen double bond and the carbon on the right hand side there that we have in blue, there was a CH2 becomes a CH3. So if we look at what's happened in terms of going from the reactant to the product here, we have the same number of atoms in the enol as we do in the final product, which we call the keto form, 
because it is a ketone, has that carbonyl group in there, and that carbonyl is directly bonded to two other carbons. So what's happened here in going from the enol form to the keto form is that we have taken, when we think about what atoms we have moved around, all we've done is we've taken this hydrogen atom, and the net effect is that it's come over to here. So we had a CH2 up top, we've got a CH3 down below. The only other thing that's happened is that we move some electrons around. So to go from the enol form to the keto form only involves moving one atom. And the special term that we describe, that we used to describe the process of creating a constitutional isomer that differs from another by only one atom is we refer to that process as tautomerization. Or we say that these two molecules are related as tautomers. So tautomers are defined as molecules, constitutional isomers, that is, that differ in the placement of only one atom. We can have different placements of electrons as we see here, where the carbon-carbon double bond has become a carbon-oxygen double bond, but when we look at where the atoms are, the two molecules are gonna differ only in the position of one atom. All the other atoms will be right where they were to start with. So tautomers, we would describe that this keto form and the enol form are related to one another as tautomers, a special kind of constitutional isomer where the molecules differ in the position of only one atom in go comparing one to the other. And the process that's used to transition from one to the other, we describe as a tautomerization process. So we describe this process of going from the eto, enol to keto or vice versa as tautomerization. And the major product that we would observe in the reaction flask is generally gonna to correspond to the keto form because the keto form is generally the more stable of these two. And so that's why the equilibrium generally favors the keto form in this reaction. And so if you were to look at the final product that would result from mixing the alkene with our acid catalyst and water, the final product would not be that enol, the final product you would observe would be the keto. So let's take a look in a little bit more detail at this reaction, specifically at the mechanism for how we convert the enol form into the keto form. So what is the mechanism for the keto enol tautomerization? So we'll take a look at the mechanism for this keto enol tautomerization. An important point to make here is that this reaction is going on under acidic conditions because we mentioned that the addition reaction is catalyzed by acid. And so the final product is gonna be sitting there in an acidic mixture. And so the mechanism here to go from the enol form to the keto form, we can assume is taking place under acidic conditions. That is important because the acid is gonna serve as a catalyst for this reaction. So let's take a look here at how this is gonna take place. So we'll go ahead and make our enol form, drawing everything out here. And then we bring in our acid, which I'll just abbreviate as H+, as you are welcome to do as well when writing mechanisms. And what's going to happen here is we've seen previously that pi bonds are very prone to attacking protons. And that's exactly what's going to happen here is the pi bond comes over. It's going to form a covalent bond to that proton in order to give us our intermediate. So we've essentially following Mark's rule here to decide where to put that new proton. We're going to put it there at the end on the carbon that has more protons already. That's going to leave us with our OH group right here and a positive formal charge right there. And one thing that favors this reaction step taking place is that our carbocation intermediate here can be stabilized by resonance. So when we have an atom that has lone pairs of electrons directly bonded to a carbocation, we can take those lone pair electrons and move those down to make a carbon oxygen double bond in this case. We could have also done that if we had a chlorine atom there or something uh, that we could see in some other types of addition reactions. But here we have an oxygen, so we just take that pot, that lone pair of electrons and convert it into a pi bond. That's gonna leave us with a lone pair up here and our positive formal charge up there. So that's gonna help to stabilize our intermediate because of the fact that we can share the burden of that positive formal charge over two atoms. Then what's going to happen at the next step of the mechanism after this so-called protonation step, because we're protonating the 
organic molecule is that we're going to take and use we're going to take and use water to deprotonate our intermediate so first step was protonation and that acid happens to be acting as a catalyst which means that we have to regenerate it at some point we're actually going to regenerate it right here that second step which we call deprotonation so in the deprotonation step what we'll need to do is take a base to remove a proton and the specific proton we're going to remove is that proton that's bonded to the oxygen because by doing that we'll be able to give ourselves a product that has no formal charges so we bring in what we could use as a base and what we have available in the reaction actually we said there's water water we've seen acting as both an acid and a base previously it's going to act as a base in this case that's one of the things that makes water so versatile is that can act as both an acid or a base so water comes in acting as a base to grab that proton that forces the oxygen hydrogen bond to break and the electrons from that bond to go on to the oxygen and that's going to give us our final product right there our keto form of this molecule now we'll have an oxygen had one set of lone pair of electrons to start with it picked up another one by breaking that oxygen hydrogen bond giving us the keto form of this molecule let's do another example problem of predicting the product or products of the acid catalyzed hydration of alkynes as always, you're encouraged to try this on your own before going through the solution. So let's go ahead and in predicting the major organic product or products of this reaction, what I'm gonna to do to set myself up correctly for this is I'm gonna look at and ask myself, what would the enol intermediate or intermediates be here? And to form the enol or enol intermediates, what we're going to do is add H and OH across the carbon-carbon triple bond in such a way that we follow Mark's rule. Now in this case, looking at each of the two carbons here and here, they're both equally substituted. So what that means is that we need to actually create two constitutional isomer enols here that correspond to adding H and OH to either of those two carbon atoms. So let's go ahead and do that, creating our five carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five. At carbon number two, that's one possible place we could put the um, oxygen atom. So I'm just going to number my chain here to keep myself in order. So carbon number two could have the OH and the start of the enol group. And I do need to remember at carbon four, we have a methyl branch coming off. The other enol intermediate that we would create would be the other constitutional isomer corresponding to putting the hydroxy group at carbon number three. So these are going to be our two major enol intermediates. And then from there, we have to do that tautomerization process in order to convert those into our final so-called keto form, which is going to be the major expected product of these reactions. So to get to the keto form, what we will do is plug in a carbon-oxygen double bond where the hydroxy group is and we'll get rid of the carbon-carbon double bond. So we'll go ahead and do that, making this tautomer. So convert the carbon-oxygen single bond to a carbon-oxygen double bond and get rid of that carbon-carbon double bond that's in there. So we're gonna do that down here as well. You should, of course, also be able to write out the mechanism for this if I ask you to, following the steps that we just looked at a couple of minutes ago for this reaction. But if asked, as you were in this question, what are the final major organic product or products? What you would need to put down is this. So these are going to be your two major organic products. Double check that they are different constitutional isomers. Don't be a rookie and draw two identical things twice. These are definitely constitutional isomers because they have the carbonyl group at different positions of the chain, at carbon number two of the chain or at carbon number three of the chain here. So that's going to be our solution for this problem.